Hey, good morning, Drive Time. Welcome back. As always, I'm Dave Drum, and I'm uh, fortunate enough to be able to host each week with a different topic and a different speaker. This week, we have the pleasure of uh, sitting with Ken Fox. Ken uh, has been involved in recovery ministries for about 27 years. And uh, Ken, uh, it might seem odd to, to some of our viewers uh, or those listening online that we would bring in someone with such a specific background. And um, what I would like you to do is kind of unpack your story uh, of recovery and, and why it's such an important part of your ministry and your involvement uh, at the church and just to the community as well. Um, so, but first, thanks for being here. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with us. And uh, if you would, uh, you know, give us, give us your story, Ken. Fantastic. Thank you, David, so much. And um, hello, gentlemen. Uh, a pleasure to, and an honor to be here to share some experience, strength, and hope. Um, yeah, originally it was about uh, leadership and men and different things, uh, but uh, my, my experience, my true experience is in the recovery world. Having served now the last seven years for a Celebrate Recovery on Monday night right here in Cape Coral, uh, with tremendous support from Cape Christian. Many of my team uh, uh, are Cape Christianers, if you will. But in my own story, um, how did I get involved? Well, I was 30 years old, and I was a very low-bottom, alcoholic, drug-addicted person. Uh, I had tried multiple times to stop. I was married with two little kids at the time, and um, I went into 12-step recovery for that, okay? Through that process, though, I learned that I desperately needed other men in my life. I needed accountability. Um, I got what we call a sponsor. And I began uh, the road of recovery in a, in a very serious way. It was a priority in my life. But as I went through that, I realized, too, that um, the men in my life were, were, were speaking life into me. And I started to learn that it, alcohol and drugs is, is a known issue of recovery and definitely was my primary challenge, uh, which led me in. But I struggled in so many other places and so many other areas. Um, having come to Christ after a couple of years in recovery, then he starts to do the heart change within us. And I realized that what I thought was a man right? The John Wayne tough guy. I was still wearing many masks, many masks. And I learned that recovery was so much more than people who drink alcohol and drugs. And I had a lot of other things to look at and to take care of. Definitely. So, and I think for a, a lot of us, myself included, we, we think in terms of recovery or recovery ministry, and we focus on, on just that, you know, someone who's addicted to drugs or alcohol or both. Right. Uh, but you're, you're talking about uh, a, road, a road to recovery and a process um, and recovery from other things. So this isn't, we're not just talking about uh, drugs or alcohol. Uh, so there, there's other areas of the recovery ministry? Exactly, David. And, and this is a area, or I, sh I should say kind of a shadow over church recovery programs that people just assume it's alcohol and drugs, you know, and it's and of course, there's men and women, but you know, we're in a men's venue tonight or today. <clears throat> we see men um, coming in, we only have 30% of our men that are coming on Monday nights and in most recovery uh, church recovery programs, only 30% are alcohol drug addicted. There's gambling, there's codependency, there's anger, there's financial issues, there's pornography and other sexual integrity issues. And basically what's happening and, and what we know, and we don't always want to look at, is that sin gets carried away, right? If, if, if a man has a lust problem, and he doesn't put it in check or stay uh, with other men accountable, mm, pornography runs rampant. You know, 
I could share stories of men whose wives have left them. They've lost their families due to pornography. Um, we know stories um, of men, and there's one individual, he's $70,000 in debt today from some online poker and some trade exchanges, getting involved in the stock market with like E-Trade or something. You know, this guy just got so caught, and it all started with lottery tickets. And this is not an individual who is known as an addicted person, yet this guy's 70 grand in debt and losing his house. And you can bet wife and family not happy. You know, we've got another guy, he's a baseball coach. This guy comes because he's finding himself so angry at times with the parents' behavior, right? And this guy's wanting to lash out. And what does he do? He ends up yelling and screaming at the kids. And so he shows up and says, man, I think I have an anger issue. Just the mere fact that he would take off his mask, humble himself and say, I think I have an issue with this. Can you guys help me? Well, we're not counselors. We're just you know, most recovery groups, it's identification. People meet together. And as we meet, you listen to testimonies, you listen to lessons, you can go to the smaller open share groups after. And over the, when you suit up and show up, you start to realize you're not alone. You know, uh, some things, eating. How many people say, oh, I, eat, I don't eat well and, and I'm overweight. Do you have a greater problem? with your eating, then you really want to recognize. And do you need help with that? And does getting with a couple of other guys now recovery for overeating, right? I weigh 170 pounds. And I very, very selective in what I eat. I actually have a guy who calls me once a week to say, put that cookie down. <laughs> like Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie. I have sugar levels that don't do well with sweets. Well, I couldn't stop. I mean, I was eating Swedish fish and, and ice cream every single night. And, you know, I simply told someone, he said, you know what, why don't we work together? And now I have another man in my life that holds me accountable not to eat sweets. And we just discuss it once a week. So not all recovery is this hard, low bottom, you know, treatment center, overdosed, individual. Yes, we do have that. Yes, heroin addicts do come. Yes, low bottom alcoholics do show up. And then we do know what to do. But recovery for men, especially in Christian faith, is so much more. It just requires openness and humility. So it's interesting that, that you're, you're tying together whatever the addiction is, whatever the, the item is that you need recovery from, back to sin and you know many times in sin and we see it all through scripture all the way back to you know the garden when adam and eve sin they hide and men are no different today than we were in creation that when we sin when we are doing something that we're not proud of that we know we're not supposed to do we hide and mm -hmm. from listening to you it sounds like the the first step to really all of it is to come out of that hiding and engage with other people. You, you nailed it. It's, it's dead on. That is exactly what takes place. I personally, I didn't want anybody to know as a 30 year old uh, that I had an alcohol and drug problem. And then later, I didn't want anyone to know that I had magazines and well back then VHS uh, tapes of pornography. Right. I don't want anybody to know about that. That's not something I'm going to talk about. Little did I know before before Christ that that was a problem. I'm 27 years uh, clean and free from alcohol and drugs. Um, 23 years free from pornography. OK. Um, 22 years free from nicotine and smoking cigarettes. I haven't bought a lottery ticket in over 20 years. The last time I had a vein come out of my forehead and foul language came out of my mouth, I'm going to go years ago because I really don't know what it was. But this was a, anger was a major, major deal for me. So for me to be able to be calm and poise, pause 
and not say and act out and cause more pain and harm. Um, I'm free from that and I can keep on going. So I, I see that the sin, right? They bit the apple, they hid from God. Oh man, I wanted to hide from all those other things. I was okay if you knew I was a drunk and in recovery, but man, I did not want you to know about these challenges that I have in life. And since I've come out and I've been open about it, I have full recovery in my life. I have greater victory in Christ by being open and not hiding than ever before. Well, that certainly is uh, encouraging. And, you know, I, just sitting here, I have to wonder, like, how many guys are sitting here watching this video, listening to this audio going, uh, yeah, but I, I, I don't know if it's for me. I, I don't know if, if that would, would be something I need. Yeah, I struggle with that. Or yeah, I probably do X, Y, and Z too much. I, I, don't, I don't know. What would you say to that guy who right now is going, I don't know? Um, contempt prior to investigation. Okay. I would say to the individual who's not sure what he needs recovery from, um, to go to the, to go to a church recovery meeting for six weeks to, to, you can make a commitment for six weeks. Your, your presence in the meeting will encourage others around you because there's strength in numbers. You don't even, you don't have to speak. You don't have to do anything. Um, and, I, and I would say that until you investigate, until you listen to recovery stories, until you're around others. I mean, we have little old ladies coming to our recovery meeting on Monday night with all kinds of different hurts in their lives. None of them have any of the things that I challenge with. We're, we're polar opposites. But they've got judgmental thoughts that drive them crazy. And they just want to know is this a safe place for me to come? Because they don't feel safe on Sunday talking about this stuff or showing up on Sunday. They're not hearing about it as much. Um, so I would suggest that you make a commitment um, to show up and to experience it. Um, I would also, can I challenge him now, David? I would put a challenge to every single man that's watching this. And again, we're not fishing to find out if you have an addiction or to pull you out of the closet in some way. Um, I think it's strong when men get together and they humble themselves. But it starts with you personally, as it started with me. I would challenge you to look in the mirror at yourself and forget that you're perfectly righteous in Christ. Although you are, put that to the side. And in your flesh, looking at yourself, could you honestly say to God, I got it all under control? If there's one area in your life that you don't have under control, I would suggest you experience some recovery meetings and find out how other men do this and stop trying to do it on your own. Well, that, that is a challenge and it's a big deal. Uh, gentlemen, what we're going to do is put the, uh, the contact information for Celebrate Recovery into the description of this video uh, so that if, if you are that guy who, who accepts Ken's challenge to us this week and you look in the mirror and you realize, or maybe you realize even before you get to the mirror, that you do need help dealing with a particular area. Um, that information is going to be there. It, it's going to be available to you. Um, and just know that there are guys like Ken who are willing to be open, willing to be transparent with you um, and, and to keep it, uh, just keep it to themselves and, and hold on to that so that there is no embarrassment. There is no cause for concern. Um, Ken, I, I can't thank you enough for, for spending time with us today. Um, I know that you shed light on the recovery ministry that I didn't know existed. Um, even in all my time around the different churches, uh, that I've been a part of, I didn't realize that the, the broad expanse of, of really sin issues that you guys help 
men and women alike, address uh, through just biblical principles of, of community and, you know, being open with one another and just being willing to leverage your past uh, for everybody else's future. Uh, it's a big deal. And I want to thank you for that, Ken. Thanks so much for, for having me. It's, it's a passion uh, to share the healing that's available. And uh, I, hope, I hope that we struck some chords. And, and I hope that for anybody who has been wondering if it's safe, the answer is yes. Yeah, there's a safe place for us. And we all have the opportunity to grow. Amen. Amen. Gentlemen, thank you for being here today. Thank you for uh, joining us in an another uh, episode of Drive Time. And we ask you to come back next week. As always, new speaker, new topic. Have a great, great week, guys.